Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. Express bus from Chilliwack to SkyTrain. A disgraced Chilliwack pastor is back in court and boy was it cold. Thanks for watching. We are committed to providing local news and news that impacts our local audience from Harrison to Garrison, Greendale to Hope and everywhere in between, including Agassiz, Rosedale, Squiala First Nation, Fairfield Island, Ryder Lake, Cheacton First Nation, Yarrow and downtown Chilliwack. And our very special guests this week, Lisa Wallace and Maddie and their interview with Barris Carden. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started. Records fell, schools were closed, the winter wallop hitting the valley with an icy Arctic blast this week, bringing snow, cold, and generally, well, misery to Chilliwack. That included a 30-car pileup near Hope, and Highway 1 had better ice than the Chilliwack Coliseum. If it felt colder to you than a normal winter, you're right, as the thermometer hasn't dipped this low in over eight years. Now, the snow is going to taper off as the temperatures increase into the weekend to just over zero and then on to nine degrees. With rain in the forecast, which translates into slush on the streets and the sidewalks. Abbotsford and Chilliwack City Council considered and agreed to be on board with an FBRD proposal to have the Fraser Valley Express bus go to Low Heat Station in Burnaby. Now, this is not a done deal yet, as a number of hurdles still have to be taken care of. That includes financing from both the cities, and before the FBRD can sign off, the BC Inspector of Municipalities have to give their thumbs up before buses actually start to roll. Then there's the traffic issue. FBX would take two hours from Chilliwack and 90 minutes from Abbotsford just to get to low heat. John Vermeer, the disgraced pastor charged with obtaining and using child porn via his church computer, was back in court. His trial began actually in July of 2019, but has been through many delays. Computer file sharing technicalities have been cited as a major reason for the delays. The congregation remains in shock over the allegation that a church computer was used for the downloading, and this trial could last into May. Sadie Hull went to work last week at Cottonwood Mall at the location of Things Engraved, and shortly after she got there, she was fired, as were three other staffers. No one saw this coming. Things Engraved shut down their entire nationwide chain with less than 24 hours' notice. Employees were given a severance and a letter stating that the franchise might be able to restructure, but that's not a given. Calls to the Cottonwood Mall and the national management were not returned. The third annual Fraser Valley Marches for Women is this Saturday. The event is accessible, open and inclusive, marching rain, snow or shine. Let's hope we don't have snow. Fraser Valley Marches for Women was founded by the Ann Davis Transition Society and their executive director, Patty McAhonick, and held its first march in January of 2017 in solidarity with the demonstrators that descended on Washington, D.C. to raise awareness of women's rights. Also, in response to the city, turning down a women's shelter. That proposal was from the Ann Davis Transition Society. Drunk and stoned drivers paid the price courtesy of the RCMP. During the month of December, Mounties took 45 impaired drivers off the road. Officers issued 38 immediate roadside prohibitions ranging anywhere from 3 to 90 day driving and 7 24 hour driving suspensions. This is for impaired drivers over the holiday season. The RCMP also acknowledged the efforts of Operation Red Nose volunteers who provided over 530 safe trips home to revelers throughout the month of December. In September of 2018, UFB Abbotsford bought Finnegan's Pub and Phoenix Ballroom for $10 million. And it seems fitting that the building, a pub, remember this is university life, becomes part of the U District landscape. It's now just Building K. Most of the facility went online back in November, but this past Friday, that was the dedication ceremony. Abbotsford's Paul Esposito, the former owner of the restaurant that has been transformed into Building K, will be honored as part of the building will be housing a center in his name. 
The annual event where bikers take over Tradex in Abbotsford is coming up. It's not a gathering of Hell's Angels. It's the annual Vancouver Motorcycle Show, January 24th to the 26th. The headliner outside of the showcase of bikes will be the Seattle Cossacks Motorcycle Stunt and Drill Team. Both FBN and Chill TV have family packs for tickets to give away. And just go to the Fraser Valley News website for details. And when we return, sports. Chill TV Sports, the winner of the first Challenge Cup between the Pacific and Vancouver Island Junior Leagues were the boys from The Rock. They won 7-4 over the weekend in Nanaimo. The Pacific League, including Abbotsford and Mission, continued this week. The Chilliwack Chiefs have a pair of home games this weekend, Friday against Coquitlam, Sunday afternoon against Langley. The Vancouver Motorcycle Show, bringing their best and newest motorcycles, scooters and ATVs and side-by-sides to the Tradex in Abbotsford, January 24th to the 26th. And just head over to the Fraser Valley News website to win family packs of tickets. Keep an eye on links right here on Chill TV. Generation Health is running another program cycle at the Chilliwack YMCA starting February 3rd. Generation Health is a free 10-week healthy lifestyle program for kids and their families. Information can be found through their website. And now Barris Carden and his interview with Lisa Wallace and Maddie. Hello everyone, it's my fantastic pleasure to introduce Lisa Wallace and Madeline Keene. And they're here to talk about their book, Embrace. Uh, stories of humor, humanness, and hope. Lisa? What inspired you to, to write this wonderful book? And I read it, and it is a very, very wonderful book. Thank you. Um, well, obviously, Madeline inspired me to write the book. Um, Madeline has some diverse abilities. And so last year, we were in a year of transition, um, moving from sort of, uh, adulthood, teenage years, or sorry, moving from teenage years and high school into adulthood and university. and. Um, we were um, in so so at, at that point you, you thought I want to write the story or well we were uh, experiencing some experiencing some unique uh, situations and so I just started journaling and through that process realized that um, I have an older daughter Lauren mm -hmm. um, and started to sort of compare what Madeline was experiencing with what Lauren had gone through and realized that. Um, there are a lot of myths out there about people with diverse abilities. And so in writing and journaling, I realized, you know, we've kind of conquered those myths and debunked those myths. So um, I started just journaling and writing and then thought, well, maybe that's something that other people would be interested in reading. Well, and you do, it's a whole life history uh, mm -hmm. uh, through here. So it, you, lots of, lots of funny stories, uh, endearing stories. Uh, Maddie, uh, what did you think of the book? I really enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed like explaining about how um, how I ended up with my diverse abilities from birth to adulthood and how I dealt with it as I went along through my life. So some very interesting uh, stories in there and some funny stories too. Do you, what was what, what did you think was one of the funny stories? Well, one of the funny stories was me and my mom and my sister went skiing up at Manning. I've been skiing there since I was five, and my sister's been skiing there since she was seven. Wow. So um, we've been skiing a really long time. My sister pointed out a tree well and that she wanted to ski down through. And I was like, well, that looks tricky, but I, want, I was as curious as I was, wanted to follow her. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? So I remember reading that part, and you got all sweaty trying yeah. to drag yeah. Maddie out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, some funny stuff. Yeah, it was uh, definitely uh, because then I fell into the tree well instead of going through it properly. <laughs> and I had to, a very hard, had to take off my skis, <laughs> had to crawl up the slope, kind of like a crab. 
Oh my gosh. Oh, of course. Like oh, a dog. Like oh, a cow. no. Yeah. Um, it, it's a big commitment to write a book. Uh, how long did it take you to write? Like for, for those of us who haven't written a book, which is probably a lot of the audience, including myself, mm -hmm. uh, what was the commitment to, what, what was involved? Um, so I started journaling last October and then um, went into the publishing phase in about March and then spent all of the summer doing the editing and proofreading. Um, and then my bonus son, Kieran, he did um, the design, the cover design, and Madeline did all of the artwork within oh, the book. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Good job. Yeah, Thank you. look at that. And then we were finished and published um, end of September. So almost oh, so, a year. Yeah, so, and I ordered it on Amazon. You can get it on Amazon, and I understand locally at Nuggets. Mm -hmm. So hop on down to Wellington at uh, Nuggets and uh, get the book there. Um, now, uh, a lot of ups and downs, uh, a very positive story overall. What were some of the frustrations uh, that you, you experienced, um, not in the book, but in, in, in the life history here that is covered in the book? I, I think the, the biggest, as a family, we always come from the perspective of um, do our best until we know better. Mm -hmm. And then when we know better, we're, the responsibility is to do better. So that's how we look at that's how we've kind of viewed the world and lived our life is that um, we just assume that everybody's coming from a positive place. And through our experiences, we just take it upon ourselves to share our stories so that we can teach and so that people can learn from what we've experienced. Um, I would say the biggest thing has been sort of that tireless advocate for things that Madeline needs and... Um, that you needed to be, but really the whole family. The whole family, uh, is, yeah. yeah. The whole... That totally comes across. The family, yeah. That we all were just advocates for, for what she needs, but also for inclusion as a whole. Mm -hmm. And um, seeing those situations where we can um, work and problem solve together. And I think that's one of the things that we've learned and the skills that we've honed is our problem solving. Mm -hmm. And just that positive problem solving like if somebody says we know that can't be done our perspective is always we think it can we just we just need to think creatively and innovatively well I mean what I like I think most about the book was it was such an easy read because um, I very quickly got into your story and uh, it really felt like uh, you made us understand what your journey was like uh, it, there was negative things there was positive things um, there were some funny things. Uh, Maddie, your first job, can you tell us about what happened there? Because it's in the book, but yeah, we'll share um, a little bit. Well, my first job is we've been actually, we've been um, dropping resumes. Me and my support worker have been dropping off resumes. Uh, my support worker from uh, Teen Club, she, uh, she went with me, along with me, and we uh, dropped off resumes everywhere at places that I would love to work at. And it, um, one, finally, after a while, McDonald's had an open interview thing. Oh, that's so, cool. So I said to my support worker, well, we should go in and try. And Good for you. To see what's going on. And so I went in, and I, um, basically what I did was I, I said I would like to apply here. And they said, great, um, just go get yourself comfy, find a seat, and I will be right there to interview you. So, and so you had the interview, and how did that go? Oh, the interview went really well. They, um, they said I was doing a great job at answering the questions, and then they, basically what they did was they hired me on the spot. Oh my gosh. And gave, and gave me the paperwork and everything, and explained, like, I have to sign all this and hand it in. Okay. Well, um, well that was fant that's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. So there's so, so many other stories uh, in the book as well. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, and... That was a huge learning experience for us um, because we it sort of we sort of flipped the script on that because we had at that point always thought oh Madeline needs the skills before she applies for these jobs so we were being very careful in the jobs that she was applying to and at that moment when they hired her on the spot we realized. Um, that the opportunity sometimes presents itself mm -hmm. and then the skills come afterwards. You were very introspective in, in that way. Uh, I noticed, uh, you know, you, uh, you admitted uh, that you were kind of a, a lot of times sort of finding your way uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Matt, Maddie would sometimes uh, lead and you would kind of follow mm -hmm. what she was doing, which mm -hmm. I thought was really interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, in terms of, uh, uh, for the reader, what do you hope, when you wrote this book, what do you hope people get from your story? Um, I guess I, I hope that people will look at this as an opportunity to learn um, and, and embrace diversity, uh, maybe question perspect their perspectives on things, um, and look at the fact that all people have diverse abilities. We all do. And so really, people are people. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when we embrace diversity, we are making our world that much more interesting. And that diversity is to be embraced, not to be fixed. Mm -hmm. So when we move forward with that open mindset and that open heart, we build very rich communities. Well, and you've taken a big step uh, with this book because it, it just makes um, your story accessible and people with similar stories, it makes it accessible for, for, for those of us that uh, haven't had that experience. So I really encourage you to go down to Nuggets on Wellington pick up the book and have a read. And uh, I'm just gonna say thank you to the audience uh, for watching. And I'm gonna ask you both uh, to autograph my copy. Of course we will. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And we'll see you next time. There you go. Goreng is an Indonesian fried rice dish. It's an original recipe that has been handed down from Doubtson that we at Hofstede's have been using for 20 years. It is mildly spicy with hints of curry. Come in and enjoy it on Thursdays in our cafe as well as in our takeout section every day. Please come and enjoy. Chill TV weather, the good news is the Arctic cold blast is over. Now comes the tricky part. Temperatures are going to rise anywhere to 7 to 9 degrees, which means all that snow will melt and localized flooding is now a concern. And thanks for joining us this week. Thanks to our guests, Lisa Wallace and Maddie, and their, their interview with Barris Carden. Now, if you would like to share the spotlight, even if you've never been on camera before, send us a note to news at chilltv.ca with your CV, and if you have it, links to your video. And if there's something in Chilliwack in the Eastern Fraser Valley you feel we should be reporting on, again, send us an email to the same address, news at chilltv.ca. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane.